the reason I'm doing this video to teach you this is because nobody can take that away from you. Once you learn a language, you, know, you can't buy knowing a language. What's up everybody? This is Mr. Abroad and I'm a polyglot, meaning I speak multiple languages. And some people have asked me that. Two, two of the two questions I got posted on my videos, how do I know so many languages? Well, first, my first response is just like, it's like learning anything else. You take the time to learn it. And when, when do you want to learn something is when you have some kind of motivation, inspiration. So in this video, I'll tell you how I learned so many languages. Watch till the end because you'll find out my steps. Uh, uh, Satu ticket. Satu ticket. Could be like three, four, five. Doesn't matter how many steps. You can be like me, but don't be like me. Be be your, be like you. If I can do it, you can too. You just have to find the reason, a list of reasons why you want to learn that language, because that's going to be very important. That's going to drive you through the whole process. Languages uh, can be difficult. There are so many languages in this world, and one of the reasons I learn languages is to connect with people. It's like a it's like a key to a new culture. You're like. <laughs> You could be anyone from anywhere, and then you have this key, you go into that country, go chuk, chuk, chuk. Hello, Li Hao, Li Gates, whatever. You can be part of that culture, you can experience a piece of that culture, your language being the key. The reason I'm doing this video to teach you this is because I think I'll stop making travel videos. There's too many. Uh, I don't know how to make it different. I thought I would share my experiences, but there are like thousands of other people doing it on YouTube, quitting their jobs, traveling. I did quit my job and traveled the world. Many people are doing that now. I like languages and that's my talent. So if I can help you with that, uh, be more reason for me to make those videos. So did you find your reason? Did you find your reason why you want to speak languages? Is it because you're going to visit a country? Is it because you want to talk to people, you want to uh, learn different cultures, is that the reason? Well, it needs to be a really good, strong reason. The first, if you really want to get to know the language, you're going to need to reason like, I want to learn about the culture, I want to learn why people eat spicy food all the time, I want to know why this country, you can have five wives, I want to know if I arrive in this country, if I can get citizenship and I can adapt to the people here, if they'll like me. That's, th those are good reasons. Those should be stronger reasons why you want to learn a language. The, with the mark, and by the mark it's a E sound. So this is Ra, is actually Cha. You find something you liked about a language and be inspired, then you need step two, which is motivation. A really, really good reason, a list of reasons why you want to learn that language, because that's going to be very important. That's going to drive you through the whole process of learning the language and following through. It's not just like a hobby. It's not just something to do. It's not something just fun. It's deep, deep immersion that will drive you through and keep you going. That's the important part, because people give up. They quit all the time. But I always find a reason to keep going. Number three, after inspiration, motivation, number three should be learning the fundamentals. There's plenty of free sources out there. I can make a course if you want. I don't know so who's going to buy it, if you're going to buy it. But find a way to learn the fundamentals, apps, YouTube, social media. Just learn the fundamentals like the greetings and why the grammar of a language, the rules, the conjugations. Once you get the fundamentals, you can get into practice. You can start practicing with people. You can start writing, using apps to get feedback on what you've learned. So let me emphasize the importance of a reason. Write a list. Write the list. Sorry, I can't talk on camera today. Then you can move on to the fundamentals, the basics, learning like the greetings. So uh, with this part, don't overthink it. Just use like the 80-20 rule. Like learn what you will use as a tourist when you arrive to a country, like the greetings, hello, how are you? 
How much is this? Can I go there? Asking for directions. I'm gonna buy some food with Bitcoin. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna buy. I'm gonna ask them to take Bitcoin. Uh, I asked uh, Bitcoin euros and AO. Bitcoin. So let me give you an example of what I mean about uh, learning the basic, the fundamentals, and then using that, repeating it, practicing it. Uh, this is what I do. I'm in Thailand right now, and Thai is a very hard language. You know, people say, oh, you have the 5, 4, 20 tonalities. Well, first I was like, okay, whoa, whoa, uh, I can't do those tonalities. Thai, Thai is out for me, okay? But then I realized, man, I've been to this country a few times. It's great. Who doesn't love Thailand? So I was like, okay, like, I've tried a few Thai phrases and people uh, like it. You know, the locals like it if you speak Thai to them. It's like, ah, oh, I want to learn more. I want to be different. You know, I want to set myself apart. Uh, first, when I was using those few phrases, some people were like, wow, oh, you know Thai. It's like, no, no, net noi, net noi. It's like, oh, I've been, other foreigner would say, I've been in this country for a year and you know more than me. I haven't been here a year. I've been here just like, three months and not at one time just like in and out so I just relearn stuff and it's the basics I just relearned the basics and this is what you can do too Sawadikrap, Sawadikrap and people say that it's a normal greeting and you don't have other uh, greetings like you do in America like hey how are you what's up what you doing uh, it's just Sawadikrap it's one phrase one phrase and you just use that for to greet people uh, and the next phrase, if you want to know somebody or just ask their name. So I was saying that really bad, really wrong. Like, uh, but people were, they're helping me. They're patient and they help me make the correct pronunciation. So I wasn't thinking of the tonality. I was just trying to repeat what people were saying. Just remember, repeat what people are saying from the natives. And then eventually I got it right. Kun Chu Chu Arai Krap. What's your name? And I say that to many people when I meet somebody. Sawadi Krap, Kun Chu Arai Krap. Those are two phrases. And then the third phrase is how much. Tao Arai Krap, Tao Arai Krap. Tao Arai Krap means how much. So instead of going in English, it's like, yo, what's up? Hi, how are you? How much is that? How much is that? You know, have, uh, be a little bit different and go to the market and say, Sawadi Krap. And then they'll think you speak Thai, and then you can just say, oh, net noi, net noi. And then you point to that, what do you want? And of course, uh, you'll get an answer. It could be in English, or if you say it bad, yeah, if you say it bad, it'll probably be in English. If you say it good, if your pronunciation is good, you'll get a response in Thai. And then you can just say, oh, sorry, I'm learning Thai. What's, what do you mean in English? So you can default to that. Just, and then build off on that, then you can add a fourth phrase, you can add a fifth phrase and just keep going. So you do that though and you have your basics and fundamentals. And then write, take notes what you learned. Uh, I have a notepad at home for the serious learning and then I just use my phone to take notes uh, on my phone. And remember, don't worry about the tonalities at the beginning. Just worry about repeating, hearing and repeating, hearing and repeating. Because I'll tell you about the tonalities. I learned a trick, I learned a secret or not a secret, okay? No, I'm not here to sell you crap. I will just tell you what worked for me and the tones. So how I learned the tones in Thai. Yes, people understand me now in Thailand and I've been from the north of Thailand to the south. Those are a few phrases out of an entire language. And when you learn those, you can move on to the next step, which is practice and practicing. You just go to a place, even if, you have, if you're not traveling it, if you haven't, gone to a place, you can use the app to interact with somebody else and you can just message them, say, hey, how are you? Where are you from? How old are you? Uh, what's your name? And just repeat it, repeat, repeat with other people because if you're a native English speaker, there are many, many other foreigners or foreign nationalities that will want to speak with you to practice their English. And that's what I did. That's what I did. And that's what I still do. So, San Bogon. Uh, okay. So I asked him how he's doing. Send the fifth step, number five, I recommend full immersion. That way you get it ingrained in your head. That way you're going to get it memorized. You're going to have it 
for a long time and you can say you're conversational in that language, I wouldn't say fluent because fluency means you can be like a translator or talk about any topics. But if you say that you're conversational, then I think that's enough to visit a country, to meet people, to learn the culture. And that's what I do, my languages. I can say I'm conversational, some I'm fluent in, but some are also conversational. And if you find more reason, more uh, list, you find a new list to enjoy about a new language, you can become fluent in that. So those are my five steps. Are you getting that so far? It's okay if you're not. You know, it takes time and practice and I'm not the best talker. I may know multiple languages, but even my English is not perfect. In fact, here's a warning, a disclaimer. The more languages you learn, the more English you'll forget. If you're liking it, if you're enjoying this video, if I'm actually teaching you something worthwhile, then I could make a course, I could make more of these videos. You tell me, you tell me if it's working, if this is inspirational for you, let me know. Uh, I can make more videos because like I said, I'm gonna quit making travel videos. It's just taking out too much of my time and not, I'm not getting anything out of it besides just memories. So it's good enough for me, but like I'm not gonna publish travel videos if it's not uh, useful for anybody. I know you, a lot of you subscribers came onto this channel because of my Brazilian videos. And Brazil is great, Brazil is a wonderful country. I love Brazil, but the world is big. So many places to visit. There are more languages to learn. I can't party all the time. You know, I'm stimulated with intelligence. I don't like drinking much, so do me a favor and help me out here. If you want to see more videos about languages, do you like the language talk video here today? Uh, I can do more, I can do more, certainly, certainly and the beautiful sunset, beautiful sunset out here. Side note here, I have to tell you, one of the worst advice given out there in public and over the years, and uh, I first listened to it too, but it's like, the advice could be more specific. <clears throat> it's not entirely wrong, it's just said, it could be said better, it could be said more um, succinctly, specifically, and that advice is, don't care what people think about you. Don't care about others' opinions. What? How does that make sense? Makes almost no sense because you have to care about people's opinions. You are not the only one in the world. You can't survive alone by yourself. People are dependent on other people. It's like human. Human nature is to be in communities. Human nature is to be accepted. If you're not accepted in the Stone Age, and before civilization, you would be uh, out of your society, you would die out of starvation, or you would just be alone and die. Nobody wants that. Nobody wants that. So do care what people think. And how is this related to languages? It's about like politeness and generosity and kindness. Uh, so yeah, learn, learn some polite phrases. If uh, cultures, there are many cultures that are not as casual as American culture, okay? Uh, for example, in Asia, we have the uh, three levels or more of addressing people. The informal level, the casual level, you use between friends. The uh, formal level, you say to strangers. And then the honorific level, honorific level, you say to authorities. So yeah, it's good to know. It's another good tip when you're learning Asian languages and this formality is even known in South America when people say uh, senor, uh, senorita. It's, it's very common, si senor, si senorita. You have that in the US, but less common. In the US you hear more about like uh, big uh, high class service places like yes sir, thank you sir. Uh, also in the Philippines, Philippines probably mostly used. Uh, I've, I find it funny that people just end many sentences with Sir, 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 sir. So that's cute. Like Indonesia, Indonesia, it's Mr. Uh, it's one of the reasons I got my uh, channel name because I found it cute when people always call me, hey, Mr. Hey, Mr. So yeah, the, uh, learn the levels of politeness. And as a default, learn to speak in the uh, polite level because why? When you say, hey, how are you? What's up to some random stranger in a different country that the uh, politeness is important, they, they will like look weird at you, right? 
maybe if they're your age it's okay but as the default greeting you can use it for anybody young and old right but if you le learn the informal greeting and you use that for someone young okay but someone older they may get offended so just as a default learn the polite level of the language okay y'all the sun has set and this beautiful beach and beautiful nature and weather i finally finished this video i procrastinated but due to your comments and requests i made this video for you so to summarize five steps of learning a language is inspiration motivation learning the fundamentals practice in full immersion and you can learn those languages so it's like learning anything else right you have some steps you can follow my steps you can figure out your own steps i'm sharing mine with you if you do uh, find it helpful comment like send me a message if you want to make if you want to see more of these videos because since now my thai is getting better i could do a thai speaking course Thai basic, I can speak Spanish and Portuguese very well after living in South America. Now I'm in Asia, Southeast Asia, and uh, Asian languages are difficult, but that's not gonna stop me. So nobody can take that away from me. Once you learn a language, you know, you can't buy knowing a language. Once you know a language, you can't, no one can take that away from you, okay? It's like fitness. You can't buy being fit. You have to work at it. No one, no one can take it away from you, okay? Peace, peace, peace out.